So now we're uh, waiting to see what Good. you have for us. Good. What I'd like to talk about before we get into those, and I and I do have uh, a counter for you. Okay. Um, we have sessions that are set, I think, today and two others. Yeah, I think March 2nd and March, 12th. March, there's two, right. So what you will, the wages, um, you will see a comprehensive step plan from us on the next session. Okay, wait a minute. You're going back to a step schedule? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the trend. I just negotiated a contract in Jupiter where they are back to a step plan, and the sense from the membership is that's what they want. Well, I can tell you that that's probably a non-starter for us, only because we're, as, you know, we're different than municipalities. So municipalities can raise their own money if they need to for a set plan. We don't have that flexibility. We are beholden to what the state provides us. We have gotten rid of step plans for every other unit at the school district, and I don't see us going back to that type of salary schedule. So we'll certainly entertain it. And we'll look have at it those it. that that uh, information for okay. you at the next session. Okay. So I have the other article that you had proposed. I'm looking at this as reopeners. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, because I know the full book is coming up end of December, just Correct. making sure, okay, yes. just making sure we're on the same timeline. So the wage proposal, you will see a counter at the next session to be discussed at that and the one after, and of course, any subsequent sessions. I did send you a notice of impact bargaining on the car insurance issue. Right. And, they wa and you said, we're gonna meet, so let's talk about it. Okay. So I wanna talk about that first, if that's okay with that's you. That's fine, We've, um, I know that there was some rumors going around the building that you guys had never heard about that before, that that, um, that rider was gonna be required for anybody who had a take home vehicle that they'd have to have insurance. We had a proposal for you, um, and I can go back and look at the date. I think it was a couple years ago that we proposed to you a whole section on vehicles and take home vehicles because we knew this is where we were going. And if you remember, you can go back and look at the video because we talked to you about the fact that there was a, a board policy that was going to be enacted containing the almost exact same language. But I wanted to be able to bargain it with your unit so that you guys could have an opportunity to have a say in what was going to be in your contract versus what the board was about to adopt. And at that session, I believed you, your side told us we, you weren't interested. Um, so we can provide that, I can email it to you after I get back to my office of the proposal we prior, previously sent, but there is a board policy now um, so that the units are under that board policy because there's nothing in the collective bargaining agreement that says any different. So here's what they're interested in talking about in terms of um, the rider information, which Yes, if you, I mean, you're, you're going back years on that, I would imagine. Not very long because. At least a year. At least a year. Okay. Yeah. So if you send that to me, I will look at it. Here's the language we're interested in. I don't know where we would insert it, but um, members shall be reimbursed. Well, hold on. Do you have this in writing? Here it comes. Well, you know, with all due respect, I'm not your secretary. So, I mean, we really do appreciate having it a written proposal so that we're not having to go back to the videotape and I and never said you were my secretary, Vicki. So let's well, I know stop that, that but that's, right that's off the what bat. it feels like is no. that you want us to write your proposals for you. No, that's what it feels like is we're bargaining on the specific language of the articles. Okay, so, so when you which say I don't saying, want you to be you I don't want to be your secretary, to put it, in, it gets so. insulting. Okay, so well I don't mean that. to insult you, but I'm trying to figure out you know, we provide you written proposals so that you can look at the language that we're actually proposing. We have multiple sessions that we're start. Do we need to stop? No, and it, we tell you where we want it in the contract, but what I'm getting from you is, well, we kind of want this language, but we don't know where we're going to put it, so. Every time I send you something, I'm met with resistance. Now, I sent you something on a mandatory term or condition of employment, which is this insurance rider information. Correct. Do you agree that it is? Well, what you got, I got from you, Mr. Fagan, in all due respect, was we want to impact bargain the issue with insurance. That is right. not a proper notice of I impact bargaining. I need to, to initiate the status quo because I know the past practice. And the past practice here is to go to the membership and to say, sign on the dotted line. 
Well, and the, I'm not going to allow that. Well, Mr. Fagan, with all due respect, the past practice, we have a board policy that your unit is required to follow. We talked about this two years ago, that there was a board policy coming. And I don't know whether it was two years ago or a year and a half or whenever we can go back and pull the tapes, but it was videotaped. It was in this room. Yeah. And in fact, I have a copy. It was in Article 16. Tell me the date now. Vehicles. I don't, Let's you know, break I don't and get me the date. I don't have the date on this but I can go back and find it from the date of what I have filed. But Terrific. we had made a proposal for Article 16, and I can give you a copy of this if you want. And it had, it was 16.6 .6 in vehicle, mobile video, audio system, GPS, and a 16.7 with take home vehicles. And during this conversation, we told you there was a board policy that would be coming that would cover your unit. It's all on videotape. So we talked to you about- here, everything's on videotape. Right, Don't, I understand when that. When you say so, it's all on videotape, it's almost like I may deny that. I recognize that it is. We're here because this is the only location that where the videotaping is proper, correct? Correct. But okay. Mr. Fagan, what I'm pointing out to you is we had the discussion that this is board policy and that your unit would be have to follow board policy. Tell me when we had the discussion. I can go pull that up. Go right ahead. Because I have this. This was the proposal we go sent right across ahead. the table. So we'll get. I'll get that date for you. I, I, I rem remember also because that entailed a proposed uh, fee for our members for the vehicles. For the gas, yes. And, as and, does, and as I remember. Board policy. Yeah, and I remember saying, I don't know if this is working, but I remember saying that I don't want to be the guinea pig for the organization, us being the first one. And that's why we tabled it. Because okay. I remember I was very adamant about that. So I recall well, that. I'm sure if you remember that, that's what happened, but it is board policy now. So it's not that there's a past practice that we have a board policy that everyone is required to follow. The board policies are enacted under rulemaking under the APA, and so that everyone has an opportunity to speak to them if they wish. The board um, policies are published. There's a first read. There's a, re you know, they go through different permutations of these policies, so everybody is aware that these policies are being enacted, and the union had an opportunity at that time to step forward and say, hey, we're not going to do this. So by saying we have to revert to some past practice, the past practice is the policy. Why didn't you bargain at this time? If you knew it had to be bargained, why didn't you bargain at this time? Because I don't agree that it has to be bargained. It's a board policy. You, you put can, it in a proposal last time. Several times, and I told you on that the tells videotape. tells you knew it had to be bargained. No, sir. It meant that I was giving you an opportunity because your collective bargaining agreement Ooh. overrides school board policy. I'm aware. Correct? So I gave you the opportunity to get it in your collective bargaining agreement, and if you wanted to pay less for gas, to bargain that. If you wanted to get rid of that insurance or do something different, we could bargain that, and that's why we wanted it. Not because we felt it had to be, but we were trying to give you the benefit of having it in your contract versus having it in policy. I have a counter for the language of that if you're interested. Do you okay. want to hear it? Sure. Members shall be reimbursed by the district for cost of supplemental insurance within two paychecks. Well, the supplemental insurance is for their protection, not for ours. Because as you know, if, if an employee is using a, a, an employer's vehicle and they're on what's the legal term is a frolic, if you remember that from torts, they're on a frolic, that they're going, rather than going to and from a school, they decide they're going to stop at a McDonald's and get a coffee. And they happen to get an accident pulling out of McDonald's. That via, they're no longer at work because this was not something as part of their job that they were doing. They have those riders, so if they're in an accident, they have coverage because our coverage is gone. And they're on the hook for any, uh, any damage to the vehicle, any damage to persons. It's on their own personal policies. And if they don't have this rider, they're going to be on the hook for all of it. Versus if they're on our time, driving from one school to another, that's work comp, and it's our insurance for the car. But if they're doing something different with that vehicle, it is all on the officer. That rider is for their own personal protection. So why would we reimburse the officers for something that's for their own personal protection? If they see um, some untoward behavior or a crime, does the district expect them to stop? I'm not talking about a frolic. Are they expected to stop? I would have to ask the chief of police that question. I'd love to know the answer to that. It still doesn't address the, the situation you brought up. It doesn't, but they want the answer to the question so we sure. can answer it. Sure it does. I mean, 
where we come from, if you see a crime, you're sp supposed to stop. If you don't, you're, you're written up for cowardice and you're fired. If I see something in the street, I'll say right on tape, I'm going to be a cop. I'm not a coward. I'm going to stop. And I would assume that the chief of police would want his officers if they see something. How about the state trooper who was just killed on the highway? If that, so under that pretense, if that Riviera Beach cop work here, he would have kept going? Well, no, no, let's, uh, let's let call just, it. Let that, that's very, that, that's very insulting. That address, that's, that's what you're saying. It's very how insulting. How does that address the issue of the liability that you have driving that and you're just driving at home? You're not driving to stop anywhere else. When you leave and you've, you've clocked out. Some of, some of us are on call 24 hours a day. I get called out all hours of the night. But if you're if you're in the car and you're not on the way to to or f you're not on the way to an event that you've been called out to, you're just going to stop and get a drink, you know, a coffee. I think is the easiest one. And you get into an accident doing that, you're not on the clock, you're not on work comp, you're not on our insurance at that point. That's what this insurance rider is for. It's the same type of rider okay, that anybody so has who has a company vehicle. On my way home from work, and if I get redirected, what am I on? You're on our time. Okay, so when, when does that start, though, and end? So if I go 10-7 at my school, then should I turn off my radio in my car and everything else? It doesn't work like that. You just can't, you just can't go, okay, um, I'm going to pick and choose when you're on duty time. I'm on duty time the, the minute I put a uniform on and get in a car. If I'm in civilian clothes, now you're a different story. Now that's a whole different ballgame. But even if you're in your uniform and you're on your way home, you're not stopping for any crime, you have not been called back, you've, you've, I forget the numbers you use, but you've called out and said, I'm done for the day, you're on your way home, you, you're driving into McDonald's and get into an a accident, that's not on the district, that's on you, and okay, this so rider protects the When we employee. get this rider protection and everything else, so we're, the car now is, is we can use it for whatever we need to use it for? Is no, that what sir. You, no, this how? is, if you're driving this and you oh, are not but doing But it's not on company business. time, though, I'm driving it. But if you're not doing, if you're doing something that's outside your work. Outside my work, so I want to go pick up my dry cleaning after I'm done. You know, I, I get home, I want to change, I want to go back out. What's, mm -hmm. what's the, what is the difference, though? The difference is that you're not being called out to do duty for us. This is a risk management issue. This is an insurance issue. When we get in our car in the morning, we turn our radios on. That means we are on call. We are ready to go to work. At a half yeah, hour, it takes me a half hour to get to work. On my way to work, if I hear something go out, I'm going to the call. I'm not going to go, okay, I'm not going to no, go. No, and work. I understand that. We're talking about two separate things. But what you're saying, though, is don't turn your radio on because get God I haven't forbid, mentioned anything about your radio I at know, all. But that's part of being on duty, though. When you step into the car, you are on duty. You are on duty the minute you step in the car until you turn the keys off. There's no, there's no question about it. No, also, there's a code 10118. Yeah. There's countless times that we're on 10118 where they call us. They call us back. There's a code called 10118. Right. It means off duty vehicle. Back. And that's being no, 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 it's not. What it means is I'm O'Sullivan in his car driving home, and there has been happening, I won't mention the supervisor's name, that when something happens, they call anybody on 10118, respond to. Including the subject to call. So, so what is it? We can't have both sides. If I'm I, off. I don't understand why you can't have both, because unless you're being directed to a call, in which case the, the district's covering you for that, if you're just in transit somewhere that has nothing related to work, then you're not covered. I'm not quite sure why you not understand. Our that. argument is if we're not covered and we're off duty, when we go, and if I'm, we leave our workplace and we are off duty and we are driving home, right, and we have an, an accident, we're held liable. So if that is the case, our contention is then why is any officer going to keep his or her radio on once they leave their place of employment? I'm not quite sure w whether you have the radio on or off matters to the discussion here. Oh, sure it does, because we're subject to call. You're telling us we're, we're off duty. So off duty means I'm, I'm a civilian, so I turn everything off. That's what we're frustrated on is that we feel we, we, we can't have both sides. Uh, it's, maybe it's a miscommunication here. I would here. like an answer to the question of whether officers would be required to stop if they see criminal behavior or their hair standing back on end. Um, so I think, I think the discussion is centered around whether you're taking police action or not. That's, I mean, I right, think So we're talking about important. those times that you're not taking police action, so I don't understand why we're confusing it with when you are taking police action. Because we know that these things are fluid situations, and just that fast it changes. Okay. You know that. So if the situation changes and you're taking police action, then 
it, there could be an argument made that you're covered at that point, but what, what happens between the time you left the school and the time you're taking police action? That's, that's why we're having the discussion. Right, that's, and that's, that's when you need about. that coverage. It really is for your own protection. It's not for us, it's for you. When I get a document that's handed to over 100 individuals, um, that, and, I, and I still don't know the answer to this, were they ordered to sign it? I believe they were. Everyone was ordered to sign I it. I know I got it and was ordered to sign it. Okay. Because- You, you can see the concern. We have, years. not really, because everyone in the district who has a district vehicle, and I personally don't have one, but there's one by somebody in my staff who happens to drive around a lot. So we were required to take the form, have them sign it, make sure that everything was filled out appropriately, and turn it in. It's just the, re the, the normal course and scope of our business to maintain the records of who is driving our vehicles. This was not directed at school police. It was directed at anybody who is driving a district vehicle. The reason why it came up the way it did to your unit is because a lot more of your guys have cars this year than have in years past. We've been getting more vehicles for the officers at the school sites, which didn't used to be the case. Can an so, officer deny a vehicle too? That's up to the chief, whether you not, guys can. Not when you're working. When you're working, then if it's, part, if it's assigned to you during your work hours, how can you turn that down? I have the point. That'd be like saying, I don't want to carry a gun with me today. Um, that, that doesn't make sense. But it could stay at your school unless you need it for just yeah. work, yeah. I, I would think so, sure. So the question I have is that um, a bus driver, at the end of their route, drops off their kids at the last school, now has to drive that bus from the last school to the compound. Are they considered the same? Uh, personal well, that's between, like you said, it's between two different district I'm, sites. Just, they're not, they're well, not usually the driving district. it around, you it's know, picking up their dry cleaning, picking up their kids, because we find out they've done that, we're disciplining them for the it. Question. So the question, was from the the question last is, stop. Well, if, there's, if from the last bus stop to the compound, yes, they're covered by district insurance, but they're not taking that because vehicle the, home. Because the compound's considered it's a district the location. The deployment from the time they get to that compound. Correct, they and, they, and, they, check out. and, and they, they clock in and clock out. Well, they we clock out, we clock in and clock out also as a law enforcement officer. When we're in uniform in a police vehicle, the moment we get in our vehicles, is, I, this is the argument that, that's coming, that's being made. The moment we get in our vehicles in full uniform, we're clocked in. We have, to, we have a duty to act if there's a crime in progress and we see it. Till the point where we get to our, to, to the point where we get back home. Now, I understand that, but the question is not there. The question is when you're taking it to go pick up your dry cleaning or to get a cup of coffee, you're not doing the, the work of the district at that point. I understand point. that, but I so it's, it's similar to it's similar to anybody else. We have someone driving the white fleet. Well, the same thing you said. If you find out that the bus driver's going to McDonald's and when they get off when they get off duty, this is a policy for that. No, Internally, you can correct, you, you can, and we right, discipline so for So we that. have a policy built into our, our general orders that says we can't do personal business on a vehicle, in the department vehicle. Yeah, but we're not taking buses home. Okay, well, so that's a big difference. I, 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 so do, do the bus drivers have it when with the buses though? Yeah, she said no. no. No, so when they're parked at a McDonald's in the morning waiting for their next stop, that's not part of their duty. What, what is that? That's a problem for us, to be quite honest. It's well, a liability. It's all over the county because they're, they're not taking them but home. They can't take, get a personal rider on a school bus. So who's covering them then? The district. That's the gonna be the question. Them. We, uh, to be honest with you, I checked in. I have Progressive Insurance, and I, I called Progressive, and I, I looked into this re, uh, policy retainer, whatever they call it, and they don't accept, they don't have, they, they won't insure anything with emergency lights on it. They consider that an emergency vehicle. And then I called, uh, I was referred to Geico. I called Geico, uh, another uh, uh, private insurance company, and they're, they will take the policy, but the only reason, the only way they'll take that policy is if, I get rid of the progressive and bring over my personal vehicles over. Mm -hmm. So they won't accept it as a, as a written alone policy. So now, you know, they'll accept it with a, you know. Well, we can look into that. I know that the chief was telling me that he recently got it for his, his car. I know that Wanda Paul, who's the chief operating officer, has it for her district owned vehicle. So we can get a list of the insurance companies that are doing it if that would make you feel better. I mean, we well, can certainly you know, do that. This was a policy though for two years, so why are people just getting insurance now then? Well, they should have been getting insurance all along. However, you know, with your unit, because we've had so many vehicles that we've bought over the last year, that's why this is coming up as an issue for your unit. 
Is the school district self-insured? We are for some things. I'm not sure about that. We are for auto liability. For auto liability. We are. So that is my, my follow-up is that there's other smaller agencies here and larger ones larger than us where the officers do not have to pay that fee. So why, why is it that it's applicable here at the school district? Is it because the employer refuses to pay that? I think this was a choice by the school board. They put it in policy. We're just implementing the policy. And in that policy, are they, just for our membership, are by implementing such policy, they refuse to pay it for their employees to take their vehicles home and be covered? Yes or no? Well, I don't know that we don't know. I, well, hold on. I don't know that we have anybody taking vehicles home other than police, to be quite honest. Most of our units who have the white fleet, I think we're having them keep them at school sites now, aren't we? Well, we, we have uh, some. Executives, executives as well. That's well, the, the if I'll use superintendent. Right term. I know has a district vehicle, and we have a writer on his policy. Okay. That's part of his contract, I believe, with the school district, though. So you could see where our, our members are questioning that, and we're just still seeking that, that answer. Well, I'm not sure what question you're still seeking. It's a school board policy that we're requiring of anybody who has a take-home vehicle to have this non-owner liability rider insurance. Okay. The question I'm asked is that the answer to the other item from the chief yes. of police who we asked about whether they're required to stop. Yes. Okay. I think and there might be some jurisdictional issues with us. There are jurisdictional. So I can tell you that, and you guys should know this, that you can't make a motor vehicle stop for traffic violation on your way anywhere. So if you're talking about interrupting a crime, that's 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 on you from a uh, from a jurisdictional perspective. You don't have jurisdiction to be getting into a criminal um, situation off district property. So basically, so what, so so what we're saying is you're taking, I'm sorry? It, it, we, have yeah. to, we have to judge what we're gonna make the decision on, okay, do we wanna get in trouble or in an accident or whatever? Well, or taking do action take doesn't action. mean, there's a lot of things that include taking action. It could be just dialing 911, standing by and being a good witness. As you know, is, is was acceptable in a lot of agencies. So that could be a level of getting uh, involved that will cover you in terms of not just driving a bike and ignoring it. Okay, um, you'll send me the prior proposal, please. I can actually hand it to you right now if you'd like a copy of it. Sure. And then we'll get you the date. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to take five. Okay. Thank you. 